Oh, Gaskin Youth, man, do I miss you guys. Oh, man, miss our Wednesday nights, Miss Krista, Miss Amanda, Miss Stanley. Uh, gosh, just miss Miss Chrissy, everybody there. Brother David, golly, Miss Nikki, our, our King's kids. Uh, man, just miss you guys. I wanted to come out with an Easter uh, message for our youth, and uh, we're going to start doing a video. Uh, we, me and Miss Krista and Amanda talked about it, and uh, not all you youth are on Facebook, so... Even though we share this on our Facebook page, we're going to copy and link just a, a YouTube video. And uh, I just want to reach out to you guys, and we're just going to do a lesson like we normally would. Uh, it's it's an a Easter message, which I think is appropriate, uh, because uh, today we're going to talk about one of the greatest comebacks of all time. Uh, you guys have watched uh, you know, a bunch of comebacks in history. We're talking about professional sports. Uh, you know, I can think of a few uh, comebacks. Uh, one that really sticks out in my mind uh, is the Super Bowl a couple years ago with the New England Patriots. Now, some of you may have, you know, you may have watched that game. Uh, the Patriots were down 28 to three at halftime. Uh, everybody pretty much stuck a fork in them. They were done, and uh, the Atlanta Falcons were just having their way with them. And you know. Some people, you know, left the game. Some people cut the channel off, you know, started watching a movie, whatever, what have you. Um, but the New England Patriots come back in the second half and one of the craziest finishes ever to a Super Bowl and uh, won the game. If we're talking about, um, you know, you guys talking about uh, maybe basketball. Uh, the Golden State Warriors a few years ago blew a 3-1 to one lead against the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. Uh, you know, if we're talking about baseball, we, we look at uh, the Cleveland Indians. They blew a 3-1 to one lead against the Chicago Cubs all right, in the World Series. And uh, so this is, you know, this is some, some comebacks. Just I mean, there's more than that. Uh, and, and some of you may have seen them in high school sports, uh, college sports. Uh, you know, these scores that uh, for decades would have been seen as uh, sure things or inter insurmountable victories uh, came come crumbling down in unforgettable fashion, uh, shocking fans uh, around the world. And, uh, you know, even uh, a movie star, Mark Wahlberg, he, he's a diehard New England Patriot fan. He got up and left the game after halftime in the third quarter. He thought the game was over and uh, probably miss one of the greatest, well, one of the greatest, uh, you know, NFL uh, Super Bowl comebacks of all time. So um, today what we want to talk about, though, is we celebrate um, the uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter. Uh, what we're going to talk about is the comeback victory of Jesus. Now, to the world, you know, um, it may look like defeat, but what makes this story of Easter and the uh, death, burial, and resurrection uh, so unique when we talk about comebacks is that, uh, you know, the, the it was unique because the, the plan that was laid out, all right? Um, you know, Matthew 27, we look and uh, Jesus is sentenced to die by Pilate. We all remember the story. He, Pilate was the Roman governor. And uh, though Pilate famously washed his hands of uh, the death sentence, uh, the plot to crucify Jesus had be, uh, been in place long before uh, this moment. You know, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, uh, and government officials were angered and they were intimidated, uh, you know, by the works and the words of uh, Jesus long before this day. Uh, you know, we read about the Gospels that they are uh, constantly plotting ways to eliminate his powerful ministry uh, through conspiring to murder him, uh, like in Mark 3, 6. Uh, you know, uh, just after Jesus heals that man on the Sabbath, uh, uh, you know, breaking a sacred religious law, we see that uh, at once the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to kill Jesus. Jesus' enemies thought by killing him, they could extinguish his power and his ministry. Um, and why wouldn't they? Uh, after all, the world had never seen uh, anyone come back from that sort of deficit. Uh, after all, the world had never seen, uh, you know, anything that looked like this kind of defeat uh, for Jesus was actually his greatest victory. In death, Jesus was not succumbing to the plans of his enemies. He was sacrificing himself uh, for the sins of the world. He was willing 
to die so that those who followed him uh, could have eternal life. There was nothing unexpected about Jesus overcoming death. Uh, you know, Matthew 16, 21, we look, Jesus plainly explained to the disciples uh, that it was necessary for him to suffer and die at the hands of the religious leaders. There's somebody, there's Miss Christie going by right now. Uh, you know, uh, he also explained that even though he would be killed, he would also rise uh, on that third day. Uh, this was God's plan. Even though he spelled out for his followers, there uh, was still so much agony and confusion uh, in the moments, uh, you know, leading up to the crucifixion. Uh, despite many warnings, the followers of Jesus believed his death uh, to be insurmountable and a defeat at the hands of the world. Uh, much like Mark Wahlberg, when he walked out in that third quarter uh, that I told you about uh, in the Super Bowl, Jesus' disciples, Peter, ran away from the Lord during the crucifixion, denying he even knew him. Uh, but the cries of pain from Jesus' uh, followers uh, would soon turn to tears of joy. Uh, you know, we look at John 20. Uh, we see Mary Magdalene. She visits the tomb uh, of Jesus after his death and, and uh, burial. Uh, you know, when, when Mary arrived, she uh, found that the stone had been rolled away. Now, I can only imagine uh, when Mary gets to that stone and sees it rolled away, you know, what goes through her mind? Uh, you know, initially, uh, Mary and some of Jesus' disciples thought someone had stolen Jesus' body. That's the first thing. She comes up, you know, just like we come home and the door is open, we sort of get alarmed. You know, hey, somebody broke in. Uh, you know, uh, you come out to your vehicle and your car door is open, you know. Uh, has somebody been in my car? So Mary uh, and you know, the first thought was, hey, somebody stole in Jesus' body. Uh, however, Mary soon found that uh, something else even more incredible would happen. All right, and, and I can't imagine the feeling that Mary felt when she figured out what had happened. Uh, you know, in John 21, uh, 11 and 8, John 20, 11 through 18, uh, you know, what looked like the defeat to Mary and to the disciples, and actually to all the world, was the greatest victory of all. Um, you know, Jesus was not dead, um, you know, but Jesus did not escape death through some magic, you know, trick. It, was, it wasn't a trick. Uh, no, in fact, Jesus overcame death and uh, rose from the grave in a comeback victory uh, like the world had never seen before. Uh, you know, there was no need for Mary to uh, cry. Uh, instead, Jesus commanded Mary to go share the good news. Um, he later commanded those that followed him to share the good news as well. And uh, to make the disciples, you know, go to all nations. Uh, this is why we celebrate his miraculous comeback. Victory at Easter every year. Uh, you know, it's the same reason why sports teams, uh, you know, that win championships, they celebrate those victories forever. Uh, you know, I, I think back when I, I see some of the Dolphins that had that undefeated season, you know, and they bring them back on, uh, you know, every so often when they have a... Uh, you know, uh, anniversary date uh, of that, uh, you know, win where that year where they uh, went flawless and, and didn't lose a game, never been done, never been repeated in NFL history. Uh, you know, it's the same reason why, you know, uh, it, it's a reminder right, to sports fans all over and followers, uh, what is possible um, in the future, okay, because of what has happened in the past. Uh, there's always a chance for that comeback. Uh, you know, how many of you have ever been to a college game or you've been to a professional game? Uh, did you notice anything in the stadium that pointed to championships the team had won in the past? I know when you go in uh, Paxton High School now, you can see, uh, you know, in the gym, you can see some of the uh, state championship teams, even the, the uh, uh, boys teams from the past and pictures of the girls that passed. Just a reminder of uh, the achievements uh, that those teams had. Uh, you know, in victory. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's memorabilia that's displayed. I know, you know, we went to the University of Florida to see some of the Gator football games. And, you know, there's statues. They've got statues of Tim Tebow out there, uh, one of the guys that we talk about that really uses his platform for Christ. And, uh, you know, there's different things that, uh, you know, remind, uh, you know, uh, fans uh, across the board of uh, victories that's been won. Uh, 
you know, the New England Patriots, they took it one step further. In that 28-3 to comeback, um, they uh, turned that into a symbol of victory. And uh, the Super Bowl championship rings that they had reportedly had 283 diamonds to represent that 28-3 comeback. Uh, a little, you know, symbolic. Uh, just the same way Christians have taken the uh, cross, uh, you know, which once was a symbol of defeat and uh, turned it into a symbol of a miraculous uh, victory of Jesus. Uh, you know, we look at the cross at Easter and uh, we, we got to remember that the cross once was recognized as a symbol of death and defeat. And, uh, you know, Jesus, he upended this. He turned that thing around. He turned it into a symbol of victory. And uh, this is why Christians, you know, that's why we celebrate the cross. Um, I want you to look at the school board of your life right now. Just just take a second, youth. Look at the school board of your life right now. Does it look like your opponent, the enemy, the world is winning? You know, we've been going through a lot here lately. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, news. I mean, everything you see is about Corona, about COVID-19. And, uh, you know, you can get down, you can get out, uh, you can get depressed about, you know, not being able to get out, not being able to see your friends, uh, you know, not being able to go to the mall or not be able to go, you know, uh, to your hangout places. And, uh, you know, uh, you need to ask yourself just a couple of questions. Number one, is Jesus on your team? All right. Uh, have you chosen to follow him? And this may be somebody that's maybe not in our youth group that's watching this. Have you, cho have, have you chosen to follow him? Uh, you know, if so, then you can know what he has already knew uh, as he was suffering on the cross. I mean, he knew that day when he was hanging there between those two thieves, he knew this is not the end. Um, I always think about how fortunate that thief was that got saved right there on the cross beside him. That guy went to heaven. I mean, you know, boom, he got saved and he was dead. I mean, he, he had no time to sin uh, after, after he was saved. <clears throat> uh, you know, Look, look up the championship banner, okay? Look at the championship banner and, and know that even though your opponent may look as though they have the upper hand, uh, we're talking about the world right now, uh, you know, the game's already over. Uh, the championship of eternity, it has already been won long ago. Uh, you know, <clears throat> when that stone was rolled away, all right? Jesus has overcome the world. All right, and uh, you know, uh, I want you to think about this. Uh, when it looks like losing to the world is actually, or, or what looks like losing to the world uh, is actually victory in Christ. Uh, you know, what looks like defeat in your life is often just the setup for an incredible comeback by Jesus. Think about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it again. What looks like defeat in your life, because you know we all go through it, uh, adults, youth. Um, you know, we all have those valleys. We all have those dips. We all have those slides. Uh, what looks like defeat in your life uh, is often just a setup for uh, an incredible comeback by Jesus. Uh, and incredible comebacks make great stories and also great testimonies uh, to share with someone else because you never know. Somebody else may be going through that same thing you're going through. And doesn't it feel great when you can get up, uplifted from somebody that has went through the struggles and battles that you've went through? It's hard to get uplifted by somebody that maybe they can listen to you, but they just haven't been through it. Uh, you, you remember this Easter, all right? <clears throat> and remember whenever you feel like you're down, you know, uh, you're in a hole and you can't come back from it. Uh, don't lose hope. Uh, don't walk out on the game. Don't do like Wahlberg did. Don't walk out when it's 28 to 3. Uh, look to the championship banner of Christ. Uh, look to the cross. Uh, remind yourself daily of his sacrifice and his comeback victory. Uh, remind yourself that if you surrender your life to him, uh, then you're on the winning team. Uh, remember that even though the world thought they were winning, <laughs> they thought it was over, uh, Jesus never had any doubts about the outcome. Uh, and remember, he does not want to have any, uh, want you to have any doubt either. Uh, because just as uh, Jesus himself said, even before, uh, he faced the cross there in John 16, 33. I'm going to read it to you. It says, uh, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, uh, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Um, it goes on to say uh, um, there at the end, I have overcome the world. Uh, greatest comeback victory ever. 
Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions today, and then, then I'm going to cut it off here. I've been long enough, but I just want to share with you on, on this Easter, uh, you know, uh, Sunday. Uh, what's the most incredible comeback you've ever seen? What's the most incredible comeback you've ever seen? Uh in your own words, what do you th why do you think Jesus died on the cross in your own words? Why do you think he died on the cross? Uh, why is it so important for us to remember Jesus' death as well as his resurrection? Uh, even though Jesus told his disciples what was going to happen, they didn't understand or believe him. You know, do you ever struggle in the same way? Uh, how can remembering what happened at Easter help, help you when facing your challenges this week? Have you ever experienced the rejection of the world for following Jesus? Christianity, man, you got to make sacrifices. Uh, how can we continually look to the championship banner when it comes to Jesus' victory on the cross? Uh, I want to share this with you guys this week uh, as we celebrate Easter, as we celebrate Christ, uh, you know, death, burial, and resurrection. And uh, at this time, uh, I'm just going to finish with a prayer here. And uh, can't wait to see you guys. Don't know how long, you know, we're going to be doing uh, live stream, you know, doing YouTube, uh, you know, reaching each other through social media, social media, through, through phone calls. And uh, now I understand how Brother David felt the first time he was uh, <laughs> up preaching to nobody in front of this camera because this is very, very different. All right. Um, I wish I could see you guys in person, but uh, this is the way we got to do it to be safe right now. And uh, But uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for us on the cross, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, when Mary rolled that stone away, God, that it wasn't nobody had stolen that body. Father, that you had been resurrected. And uh, God, we just ask you to be with all our youth, Lord, as they're facing challenging times just like our adults, uh, you know, times that our youth actually, uh, their children will be reading about in history books. And uh, God, I ask you to be with all of them, Lord, all our youth, if, if they're, uh, you know, going through something right now, Lord, going, just not handling this well, uh, you know, this uh, self-quarantining and, and just missing their friends, God, that, uh, you know, just like, uh, you know, that comeback, Lord, that uh, the, the victorious comeback that you had on Easter, Father, there's going to be a victorious comeback. And we will see this through. We will make it through and, uh, you know, life will go back to normal. And uh, we just don't know when and, and we don't know uh, the time frame of it, God. But we know that you're, uh, you know, we're in the beginning and you're in the end and that, uh, you know, you knew everything that was going to happen before it happened, Father. We appreciate, Lord, every, the, the many blessings you've blessed us with and just ask you to uh, let us have a uh, Happy Easter and uh, enjoy it with family. And uh, we thank you for all these things. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, guys, we will see you uh, next week. Uh, Wednesday night, we'll be coming to you on another YouTube. Uh, so love you, miss you, see you.